Can you read to me the nameplate? Judge Ebony K. Williams. So the only thing that matters in this particular courtroom is how I see it. I am from North Carolina by way of Louisiana with some West Coast cool and a New York edge. Do we have a problem, ma'am? No, I don't, Your Honor. Equal justice is all about the most important values of our country, freedom, integrity, and those are the things that I'm striving for. Ma'am, you run your household. This man gets to run his. I decided to become an attorney and pursue the law. I wanted to be a voice for the voiceless. This court can not hold this woman accountable. People from all sectors of life, black, white, purple, gay, straight, queer, and that's what Equal Justice with Judge Ebony K. Williams is all about. Tour guide Rahul Varma claims his valuable camera was lost when a first-time kayaker T-boned his kayak after ignoring his instructions. Victoria Rains says she panicked in the choppy water but didn't need Mr. Varma's help. Okay, I've got Mr. Varma here as the plaintiff and Ms. Rains as the defendant. Mr. Varma, why are we in court today? Your Honor, I'm here to sue Ms. Rains mm -hmm. for her complete negligence, mm. which caused her kayak to crash into mine, mm. causing my kayak to capsize. And when my kayak capsized, my belongings, which was my water bag, fell into the water and I ended up losing a very critical piece of equipment, which was my camera. Your Honor, this was not just a camera. The reason I'm here today is because this camera was a gift from, from my dad right before he passed away. I was um, gonna ask you if you, uh, do you take photos commercially as well? I take photos commercially as well, yes. What is the circumstance in which you and this woman were kayaking in the same vicinity in the first place? I met Victoria through a mutual friend. Jessica. Okay. So Jessica reached out to me and she Jessica's asked me. a friend, me, a girlfriend, who is Jessica? Uh, it's just a friend okay. from college. And uh, she reached out, she was like, uh, hey, we have a group together you, you know, and we would love to go to Channel Islands and we want to kayak. And so we would really like you if you, want to, if you can be our tour guide, you know, that would be kind of great. So I agreed. Great. And uh, I asked Jessica that, you know, is, it, is there someone that has never kayaked before? So she pointed out that Eight people have basically no kayaking experience. There was about 12 people in the group. There was 12 and people in the group. Was Victoria one of no experience? Victoria was one of the eight people. Okay. And knowing that we had eight inexperienced kayakers, I wanted to make sure that we get there early in the morning because the water is relatively calm in the morning. Compared to the afternoons, it can get choppy right after 2 or 3 p.m. We were there and Victoria was running late. It was 10 a.m. We missed our ferry. Ah. The group was unhappy, but we decided that, hey, we don't want to leave her behind. You waited for her. We waited what for her. What time do y'all yeah. get there? We called the next ferry. Which was at what time? Which was around 12 o'clock. Oh, so now you're in mid-afternoon. Basically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so then, how at this point, sir, are you talking to me about $450 worth of lost camera expenses as it relates to this woman? Get to that part, please. Absolutely. Um, once we, got to the, once we got to the island, uh, we had a quick lunch. Everyone was starving, and then right after that, we decided to go on a kayaking adventure. Okay. Right before we left, I got the group together to do a quick briefing, and that they will be expecting some choppy waters. I asked them if they're comfortable. The group said that they're okay, so I, I, I made sure that everyone was okay to go in choppy waters for kayaking. Hold on, Mr. Varma, Victoria, were you okay to go into the choppy waters? Your Honor, it was my first time, but I agreed, yes. Okay, I'm gonna get, I want some more from you, but hold on one second, go ahead, finish, sir. Okay, so initially, Victoria was doing just fine, but as the waters became more choppy right after 3 p.m., I, I looked at Victoria and she was struggling. She was struggling more than the others. I got close, as I was getting close, I told Victoria to stay calm and remember the instructions that I'd given her prior to boarding. And what happened was, as I was trying to grab onto her kayak, to stabilize it and yes. calm her down. Yes. Her paddle hit my face and her kayak hit me perpendicular. And so I fell into the water as my kayak essentially tipped over. Once I got on the kayak, I, it was then that I actually noticed that my, my belongings, belongings were gone. The, bag, the water bag oh was gone. Oh my gosh. And I told the group that leave your phones back in the car. Right. So Do you, not take your, you understand that I, there's a risk of, of harm. Absolutely. For, so yeah. why would you bring something so precious to you on a kayak? You know what, Ms. Rains, let's, let's hear from you at this point. Do you have any evidence that you want to prove to this court to support your claim? Absolutely, Your Honor. At this point, I'd like to present this evidence. Great. So, if I might back up a bit. Yes. I'm a student at UC Irvine, Thank and you. I know Jessica, our mutual friend from yes. high school. Okay. She invited me to go on this kayaking trip with her friend, Rahul. 
And I said, yes, that sounds super fun. So we decided to meet at Santa Barbara um, at the boat dock landing. And so when I get to get in my car that morning, I realized my car battery was dead. Oh, okay. So that is what set me back, not the traffic. Okay. And unfortunately, there's nothing really I could do about that. So I called a friend, got it jumped, was on the road as fast as possible. I called Jessica, so apologetic, mm -hmm. felt horrible. I told them to go on without me if they wanted to, but they waited, super kind of them. Right. So we get to the boat and I was in such a frenzy because I was running late, I felt bad. I didn't really know anyone on the trip except mm. for Jessica. Sure. Um, and so I forgot to leave my phone in the car. And so mm. when we're on the ferry, I realized that Rahul, our instructor, um, he has a dry bag and I asked him, can I please just slip my phone in there? I know the risks of bringing my phone on a kayak. Sure. The ocean's a crazy place. I get it, but it's a better chance than just putting it in a pocket or something. Yes. So, um, he agrees, which was very kind and he's my you. phone in there. Mm -hmm. And so we get on the kayak. So fast forward and we get on the kayaks, beautiful day We're going in and out of the caves, wonderful blue crystal water. I'm having a really good time, honestly. Coming up on Equal Justice. And then all of a sudden, I feel Rahul's hand grabbing my paddle and yanking it towards him. I don't know what he was trying to do, but because he yanked my paddle towards him, I guess trying to stabilize me, the top of my kayak T-boned his. And later. So I cracked open the oven and I said, we need to let the pavlova cool, let's go have dinner. When I came back from dinner to check on the pavlova, the oven was closed. So it was cracked, burnt, and completely destroyed. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. This is Equal Justice. Equal Justice is back with the case of Rahul Varma, who blames Victoria Rains for capsizing his kayak. So the afternoon latens and it's about 3 p.m. and the water gets a bit choppy. Right. And that's when we come out of the cave and I start freaking out a bit because it's getting a little murky. The water's just kind of crazy, you but know? But you had been told ahead of time, ma'am, that that would happen the Absolutely. later the day went. Yeah. Okay. So I knew it was going to happen, but yeah. I started freaking out a bit as okay. one would <laughs> first time well, on the kayak. Well, I the ocean is very intimidating. Exactly. And so I'm trying to balance myself with a paddle and I'm kind of waving it around a bit. I was trying to get settled and I started getting settled a bit. And then all of a sudden I feel Rahul's hand grabbing my paddle and yanking it towards him. I don't know what he was trying to do, but because he yanked my paddle towards him, I guess trying to stabilize me, the top of my kayak T-boned his, mm -hmm. and then next thing I know, I, I hear a huge splash and he's in the water. Okay, this is where I want to circle back to my set of instructions that were laid out very clearly during the briefing session. Okay. Was when you're in trouble, when you feel like you're about to chop, when you're about to tip over in the water, as an instructor, wait until I come to you Calm down. The first thing you need to do is calm down, which Victoria was not able to do. She was in a full-blown panic mode. Well, I understand two, that, Raul, but here's the thing. I understand the instruction to remain calm, and I understand how that can be the intention. But you have to understand, sir, when you tell someone to remain calm on the land while you're giving instructions, that's one thing. Yeah, when you're at the mercy of God and Mother Nature, it's a little harder to remain calm, don't you think? It's not just that moment where I felt like Victoria was, didn't make good decisions or her act was not together. It was, it started the very, since the beginning of the day. So let's, let's her, I'm glad you brought up good decisions. So let's talk about some of this uh, evidence. Uh, I'm going to talk about hers and then I want you to present yours as well. Yeah. So uh, Miss Victoria Reigns, you're giving the court an invoice. Uh, do we have, uh, this is you saying that your iPhone that you put in, his the plaintiff's bag. wet bag obviously was also destroyed That's when, the, correct. when he capsized, tipped over, and you won $808.13. So actually, this is to prove that I paid for that myself. I never expected him to pay that. Because so you paid this bill yourself? Absolutely. Okay. Because I knew that having my equipment on the ocean, that's a risk. You understood the inherent risk Absolutely, of Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Varma, please offer up your evidence as well. Here's my evidence. Thank you, Mr. Bailiff. Okay, so you purchased a new vintage camera? I purchased, it? yes. Okay, but obviously not the one that your father had gifted It's you. not the same one. Yeah. Right, so it's there's some similar. sentimental value Correct. there. Yeah. And let's see what we have here. This is you communicating with the defendant. You're saying, hi, Victoria, I got your number from Jessica. Can you please pay me $450? That's the cost of my camera that was lost because of you. 
exclamation points that could be read a little aggressively. You say, I'm devastated over the loss, which you were upset. My father gave me this before he passed away, and you give your Zelle info. You say, no way. You lost my phone, too, and I didn't ask you to buy me a new one. If you didn't try to help me, we wouldn't be in this situation. Now, I do find that interesting, Ms. Raines, because some reasonable people might want some help. If they're in the middle of the ocean, they're a first-time kayaker. The rough water is uh, getting a bit intimidating. As you said at one point during this experience, you were intimidated. And it is this man's responsibility to make sure that you are safely returned to the shore side. So I was struggling, obviously. We've been over that, freaking yes. out a little bit. Um, but I began to get my bearings at the end, and I was, you know, using my paddle to balance it out. And my paddle was the only source of that is the not balance true. I had. Excuse me, I'm talking. You mm -hmm. grab my paddle, and all yeah. of a sudden, you yank my kayak towards yours. And as the instructor, I feel like your instructions were to not capsize, yet you're the one that fell into the water. Okay, so, so I'm not sure how that's my fault. Let's recap here, because I'll, let me tell you exactly what happened, what played out. She was about to tip over. Her, her kayak was- So you at, observed that. I observed her. Her kayak was almost at a 45 degrees angle. And in my best judgment, I felt like there was a good chance that she would be in water within a few seconds. Okay. Okay, you two. I've heard enough. Uh, this is, we could be here all day with you two telling I, your- I just want to make one- No, no, no. What, did you understand that, sir? Yeah. This court cannot hold this woman accountable for the very understandable and foreseeable risk that that property could be damaged or lost forever once you bring it into the ocean, wet bag or not, sir. I thank and commend you for doing your job. If this young woman was truly in danger, you could have saved her life. And if the only thing that was lost was a camera and a phone, may God help us all. The court finds that this plaintiff's case will be dismissed. That's my ruling. Judge Ebony has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim is dismissed. You know, next time, you should learn to take responsibility for your own equipment. probably stop kayaking for good. All right, guys, you've had your day in court. Please follow me. Coming up on Equal Justice. Other than that, did you enjoy the dinner part of the meal? I, I did not. I feel like we did. You did not. Why I do you say not. not? Because of all of her mess ups in the kitchen, the chicken was under seasoned, it was dry, She's the potatoes so were picky. undercooked. She's such a brat. This is Equal Justice. Marie Alcott Henderson claims her sister agreed to split the cost of a celebration dinner to honor their late mother, but then refused to pay up. Laura Alcott says the meal went south, so she owes her sibling nothing. Good day, ladies. I see Miss Marie Alcott Henderson as my plaintiff and Laura Alcott as the defendant. So I've got one sister suing the other for $200, ma'am. You say that she owes you her share of the cost of a celebration dinner party. Tell me why you're in court. Yes, Your Honor. Um, so we threw a celebration party in honor of our mother's memory. She passed away last year. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Um, we agreed to split the cost of, of throwing the party, mm -hmm. and I did all the setup, and I hosted it. And she was there to help. We had our mother's recipe book, and that was a big part of it, was to do the recipes from her book, and she just refuses to pay the money. Uh, talk to the court about how much money you spent and what proof you have of how much you spent. Uh, I do have the receipts here for... Please offer that to my bailiff, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. So I purchased several food items for the dinner and okay. dessert. Now I also see what looked like some uh, party details. So yeah. this is your balloons, your um, name card, so just the things you would have at a... Because this was a dinner party. It was a dinner party. Okay, correct. Yeah. Uh, and this is some communication that you want the court to consider. Yeah. So this is you saying, hey, Laura, to your sister here, I just had an idea. Would you want to throw a first day of spring party like mom used to? I thought it would be a nice way to remember her. You say, oh, gee, wonderful idea. So you're on board with this. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm thinking I can do the shopping and we can host it at my place. We can use all of her exact recipes, do it exactly like we remember. Are you good with splitting the price? You say, yep, this all sounds perfect. So we've got agreement here. Coming up on Equal Justice. Then as we were making the potatoes, in the recipe you'll see it says to slice them very thinly. She was slicing them thick, which caused them to be undercooked. This is Equal Justice. 
Equal Justice is back with the case of Marie Alcott Henderson, who is fighting with her sister Laura Alcott over a disastrous celebration dinner. All right, Miss Alcott, defend it. So during this dinner party that we planned, we were using our mom's recipe cookbook. Please offer that to my uh, bailiff, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. You have any other things you wanted to consider? There are a few. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So you're saying, uh, Ms. Defendant, this is the actual cookbook of your mother's recipes that you both refer to for this engagement? Exactly. Okay. So yeah. the first issue was when I got there, I realized there was no rosemary. She went out the day before, did all the grocery shopping like she said, mm -hmm. and did not pick up any rosemary. That is a crucial ingredient. And when I said that we should go get some more, she said it was basically stupid to go back to the grocery store for one herb, even though it's the titular Essential herb. Essential flavor, Correct. okay. Go ahead, what else went wrong, ma'am? Then as we were making the potatoes, in the recipe you'll see it says to slice them very thinly. She was slicing them thick, which caused them to be undercooked. And then I went over to do the dessert myself. The dessert went great. Oh. I followed right by the book and okay. I popped it in the oven for exactly how long it was supposed to be. Yes. And then when it was done, I said, we need to let it cool. So I cracked open the oven and I said, we need to let the pavlova cool. Let's go have dinner. When I came back from dinner to check on the pavlova, the oven was closed. So it was cracked, burnt, and completely destroyed. Okay. So listen, this. It's unfortunate that this dessert was ruined. Um, I'm not even saying whose fault it was at this time. I'll determine that later. But it was ruined. Other than that, did you enjoy the dinner part of the meal? I, I did not. feel like we did. You did not. Why I do you say not. no? Because of all of her mess ups in the kitchen, the chicken was under seasoned, it was dry, the She's potatoes so were picky. undercooked. She's such a brat. Judge Ebony's verdict when equal justice returns. This is Equal Justice. So where are you two today as sisters, one year out of losing the most important woman in your life? We mostly talk through family members. I don't want to talk with her. She brought me to court to force me to talk to her. So that's about all. You're the older sister, ma'am? Yes, Your Honor. Do you miss your sister? Yes, I do. I can see that. I see the pain in your face. Do you miss your sister, dear? Yeah. Yeah. So I hope that when y'all walk out of this courtroom today, you find it in your hearts to forgive, to connect, and to seize the day because really all we each have is today. None of us know the day nor the hour when we will be called from this earth. As it pertains to this situation legally, ma'am, you did say that you agreed with the concept of honoring your mother via a dinner party. Your sister, despite her lackluster culinary skills, we'll call them, she made every effort to do that. So this court must hold you responsible for the commitment you made to sharing the expenses. The court rules in favor of the plaintiff for the full amount of $200. Good luck to you, ladies. That's my judgment. Judge Ebony has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendant is ordered to pay $200. I'm sorry. This was, this was ridiculous. I know. Laura, I'm sorry that it came to this. I know it's, it seems stupid, but... The judge is right. I'm, I just miss you and I love you and we need to talk. Please follow me. Grab your belongings. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.